Hey everyone, my name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance and welcome to Clever Girl Finance TV. So in this video, we're going to be talking about why, how, and where you can get started when it comes to investing, because investing is a key way to growing your money. Stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to be telling you how to get access to the Clever Girl Finance Roadmap. Our roadmap is a step-by-step -step guide that gives you the knowledge and confidence to help you as you work on creating your own financial plan, including your plans to invest. So let's get into this video. So when it comes to investing, investing is how you grow your money. It is essentially you putting your money, your employees to work for you to help you build long-term wealth. And so when it comes to things like saving for emergencies or saving for a home down payment or purchasing a car, those short term goals that you have, then it's a great idea to have that money in a savings account because you want it to be easily accessible. However, when it comes to your long term goals and building wealth for things like retirement and pursuing your big dreams and goals, then you're going to have to invest your money in order for your money to really grow. When you compare a savings account that has a really sad interest rate given today's um, average return on savings accounts, then over time, your savings that you put in a savings account will actually lose you money as a result of inflation. And so as you think about building long-term wealth for those big goals and dreams that you have, you definitely want to think about investing your money. So when it comes to how your money grows through investing, it grows through the power of compounding. And your money doesn't just grow based on how much you have invested. Compounding also impacts the gains and dividends that your money earns. So you have the potential for your money to grow really exponentially when you're investing. So let's look at a very basic example. Let's say you have $10,000 to invest in the stock market and you get an average rate of return for that year of 10%. So at the end of that one year, you have $1,100, right? So let's say you don't invest any more money and you also don't withdraw any money and you leave that money invested for another year. Well, at the end of the second year, you will have $110 in additional earnings for a total of $1,210. And if you leave that money alone for 10 years, then you'll have $2,593. And this is all based on that single $1,000 investment at an average of 10% return. So imagine if you invested $10,000 or $20,000 or $50,000, or you invested consistently every single month over time. With the power of compounding, you can end up with a really nice chunk of cash. So when it comes to when you should invest, as soon as possible is a great time to start. And this is because time is of the essence. When you have time on your side, your investments have the time to grow and compounding has the time to take effect over the years to come. And so you want to start investing as soon as you can, right? However, if you have high interest debt, you want to create a plan to pay off that debt aggressively, put aside an emergency fund, and then start to invest. And the reason why it's a good idea to focus on your high interest debt before you invest is because sometimes the cost of that debt far outweighs any gains that you may earn on your investments. So for example, let's say you have a credit card that has a 20% interest rate, right? When you compare that to the average rate of return over the long term of the stock market of about 8%, then you're actually losing money when you look at your financial big picture by paying that 20% to your credit card company, but only getting 8% on average returns from the stock market. And so create that plan to really buckle down and aggressively pay off your credit card debt as quickly as you can, especially that high interest debt, and then shift your focus to investing. However, I will say that if you are employed and your employer offers you a match, which is essentially free money on their retirement plan, you want to take the free money. That is essentially a 100% return on your investment and that far outweighs anything else. So take the free money and then buckle down and focus on paying off your debt. And then once that debt is gone, you can ramp up your investments and your other savings as well. Before you start investing, however, there are three key things that you need to do. Number one, you need to educate yourself on how the stock market works. So read books, watch videos, and basically start to get comfortable with the lingo. 
Number two, you need to do your research, right? What are you investing in? What is it going to cost you? What are the different investment options? Doing research to make sure that you understand where you're putting your hard earned money is really, really important. And number three, you want to keep in mind that when it comes to investing, it is for the long term. So you want to think out into the future, right? You shouldn't be investing any money that you need in the short term. Instead, think about investing money that you don't need in the next 10 to 15 years. So to get started with making your first investment, you're going to need to open a brokerage account. And through a brokerage account is basically how you're going to be able to buy and sell your investments in the stock market. So when it comes to choosing a brokerage, there are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. Number one, they need to be able to execute your trades fairly quickly. So basically when it comes to you buying or selling your investments, they need to be able to do it quickly as opposed to taking days or weeks to get it done. Number two, they should have educational resources to help you learn more about your investments and also research tools. This shows that they know what they're doing and they actually care about putting their customers first. Number three, you should be able to check your account on the go, either through the website or through an app. You do not want to invest your money anywhere where you have no idea what's happening and it takes hours, months, weeks in order for you to even find out what's happening with your account. So you should be able to log in at any given time to be able to see the current state of your accounts whenever you want to. And number four, they should have excellent customer service. You should be happy to work with this company because at the end of the day, they're taking care of your money, right? And you want to be happy with whoever is dealing with your finances. And so customer service is a big one for me. In the next video, I'm going to be sharing my top tips for beginner investors when it comes to investing. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, head on over to clevergirlfinance.com to download our roadmap. It is basically a step-by-step -step actionable guide to help you as you work on improving your finances. And if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to subscribe and tell all your best girlfriends. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.